to start let's answer the question what is mathematical induction mathematical induction is a technique of proving mathematical statements for example let's say we have this statement 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way until plus n is actually equal to half n multiplied by n plus 1 uh, we are supposed to prove this statement now in mathematical induction we usually let the statement that we are going to prove be pn so pn is this expression and we are supposed to prove that pn is true uh, let's uh, verify for the case of p3 p3 means n take the value of 3 and uh, in the left hand side of this expression p3 means the sum of the first three term this will give us 1 plus 2 plus 3 which is 6 for the right hand side what we need to do is we substitute the value of n equal to 3 into this expression here this will give us 6 as well so we have just verified that when n equal to 3 this statement is true but is that sufficient to prove for all value of n where n is a positive integers that means n will take the value of 1 2 3 and so on obviously by uh, proving that p3 is true is not sufficient to prove that this statement is true for all value of n and that is where mathematical induction come in okay mathematical induction is a technique to help us to prove this statement without having to verify for every single case of n if we want to prove a mathematical statement like this using mathematical induction we need to apply this three step here the first step of the mathematical induction is called the base step in this base step we need to prove that p1 is true in the second step we assume pn is true the third step which is called the induction step we prove pn plus 1 is true this proof procedure can be best illustrated using an example in this example we are going to prove this mathematical statement is true by mathematical induction we first let pn to be this expression here the step one of mathematical induction we are going to prove that p1 is true so the left hand side of uh, p1 will be just one square and this will give us the value of one for the right hand side we substitute n by 1 when n is 1 we will get this expression here and we can see that the left hand side and the right hand side they have the same value therefore p1 is true we have completed step number one of mathematical induction for step number two we assume pn is true so why is the expression for pn since we let pn to be this expression we can just copy down this expression for pn the third step which is the induction step we need to prove that pn plus 1 is true so now the question is what is the expression for pn plus 1 what is the expression that we are supposed to prove we know that the left hand side of pn is this expression here so for pn plus 1 we need to add one more term to this expression and for the right hand side of pn we just need to substitute the m by m plus 1 and this is what we will get again for pn plus 1 we have one more extra term add to the left hand side of pn And for the right hand side of the pn we just need to replace the n by m plus 1 the n here is replaced by m plus 1 the n here is replaced by m plus 1 m plus 1 plus 1 will give you m plus 2 the n here is replaced by m plus 1 
if we were to replace the n here by n plus 1, we will get 2 n plus 1 plus 1, which is which can be simplified into 2m plus 3. That's why we have a 2m plus 3 here. So this is the expression we are supposed to prove for pm plus 1. Since the left hand side of pm plus 1 can be simplified further, so we will start to prove from the left hand side. This is the left hand side expression. Now for the induction step, the step 3, we usually make use of the step 2 assumption. The step 2 assumption say that 1 square plus 2 square all the way until n square is this expression. That means this expression here can be replaced by this expression. And therefore this expression here can be simplified as this expression. Again what we did is we replaced this expression by this expression here because they are equal from step 2. Now this might be new to you, but in mathematical induction, we often get the result from step 2 and substitute into step 3 to simplify the step 3 expression. Before you proceed, make sure you understand this step. Next, what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to simplify this expression. And after the simplification, hopefully we can get this expression here. If we are able to get the right hand side of pm plus 1 expression, that means we have proven that pm plus 1 is true. So let us simplify this expression. If we need to add these two expressions together, we need to have a common denominator of 6. Okay, that's why we have a 6 here. But at this point, it's good to compare what we have and what we're supposed to prove. We're supposed to have a m plus 1 factor here and we can easily get the m plus 1 factor by factorizing out the m plus 1. So if we factorize out the m plus 1, we left a n 2m plus 1 here and left a 6 multiplied by m plus 1 here. Now if we were to simplify this expression and factorize this expression over here, we should be able to get the m plus 2, 2m plus 3. Again, if we were to simplify and factorize this expression, we should be able to get this expression here. Now, the left-hand side of the pn plus 1 is equal to the right-hand side. And we have shown that if pn is true, then pn plus 1 is true. And overall, since p1 is true, it followed by mathematical induction that pn is true for all positive integers of n. Now, what did we show? For the base step, step number 1, we have shown that P1 is true. In step 3, we have shown that if Pn was true, then Pn plus 1 is true. So now we know that uh, P1 is true. And because Pn is true, Pn plus 1 is true. Okay, And that is to say, if P1 is true, P2 will be true. N take the value of 1. When N take the value of 1, P1 is true, P2 will be true. Okay, This is what we have uh, proven in the step 3. And do we assume P1 is true? No. For the base step, we know that P1 is true. So now we confirm that P1 is true. And this imply, based on step number 3, P2 will be true as well. Again, if Pn is true, Pn plus 1 is true, then, then we can say that if P2 is true, P3 is true. Now, um, P2 we didn't assume is true because based on this step here, we know that P2 is true. And since P2 is true, we know that P3 will be true. And this can go on. If P3 is true, P4 will be true. And P3 we know that is true. We didn't assume P3 is true because from this step here, we know that P3 is true. You can continue to apply this to infinity. An analogy for this mathematical induction is the domino effect. 